This is where you start to reevaluate what matters to you. I'm stubborn most of the time when someone puts a mirror to me and says, this is who you are. This is a very open, vulnerable space that we're entering in. The past three years, I haven't had any friends. That may be you also in this boat, and that's probably why you clicked on this video. I just wanna go over four points that I've noticed have been struggles and benefits and how they work together hand in hand during these past few years that I've witnessed being isolated. A lot of these videos that we're seeing, millennials are becoming a little bit more isolated. They're not having any friends since COVID. Could it be social anxiety? Could it be social media that has separated us? I don't know. Maybe everything. But here's my take. I'm 32 and since COVID, a lot of my friends have moved away. We've separated, we've grown apart and that that is life. A lot of us are looking at it as a negative because no one has prepared us for that. We have these expectations that all our friends that we make are gonna be friends for life. And that's not always the case because we all develop in different ways. Things do happen. Life always changes and can throw a wrench in it. There's been a lot of this shedding of old self, of old beliefs, old values and noticing that I'm stepping into this new phase, chapter, whatever you may call it. And if you're watching this video, you're not alone. And you're not because we all go through this phase and it can be a phase and it might be a long one and that's okay. For me, it's been three years and that feels like a long time. And for others, it could feel forever. I know that I have a lot of work that I'm going through and God is helping me figure that out and navigate it. The first thing I wanna talk about is reflect. I've been doing so much reflecting and I still continue on, but a lot of it was happening in the first couple months to a year. I just didn't have any distractions. With no distractions, I feel like God was able to put me in this moment of silence to grow closer to him and finally hear him. My schedule used to be filled up back to back. I would not have any openings to have a moment to just sit down with my thoughts, to be able to sit down and have a conversation with him, uh, to be deeper in my prayer. Because I had my environment just so enclosed into my life that there wasn't room for that. A lot of people actually avoid it because it's not comfortable to sit with your own thoughts. This like inner dialogue comes in of self-sabotage and negativity and it shouldn't be that way. Think of it as when you're going to work and you have a yearly review. You should look at it from a perspective of how can I fix things? How can I grow? How can I take what is being revealed to me, the good, bad, ugly, and beautiful sides that he is showing me, use that as a tool to say, okay, now that I know my truth of myself, how can I go and do good with it? How can I refine those sides to me, areas that have been neglected? You know, a lot of us have unhealthy bank accounts and we neglect looking at our statements because we don't want to face the truth of what it is. And I feel like a lot of us do that. And I'm stubborn most of the time when someone puts a mirror to me and says, this is who you are because I don't want to believe it. And I think that's why people can't sit with their thoughts because a lot of that comes out and it's healthy. It's healthy because you need to understand what sides of you needs to be brought out more and what side be unlearned. I'm doing a lot of this learning to unlearn and unpacking areas of my life that have been neglected and understanding how can I take self-control of it again. He's not exposing you and trying to shame you. What he's trying to do is develop you into the person that you're supposed to be. These moments of reflection is good to understand your past in order to move forward into your future. Second point is refocus. And so defining refocus by dictionary is what is your focus of attention on something and where are you refocusing that attention? I thought about that as I'm reflecting on my past self. What were those distractions? What were those values that I had? What was so important to me 
that I always had to put it forward. I used to have this like FOMO experience of my friends always going out and like making sure that I was always there with them. And, and in those moments, looking back, those times that I could have taken back and worked on myself, maybe had self moment days, um, you know, had more days in prayer and with God and leaning on his word because where my attention and my concerns were of these worldly things that he kept trying to repeat himself. And I remember coming across the same verses. And I know a lot of you can relate to this because you'll hear it on a podcast, you'll read it uh, in the Bible or in a book, or you'll see it on TV and it just keeps popping up. And I was just like, you know, someone said to me one time, if God repeats himself, listen. I was just concerned with the wrong things. And my value sets were focused on things that didn't bring me any joy. Everything was so temporary in my satisfaction. And I think this is where you start to reevaluate what matters to you. And also the people that you're with, because it is so true what they say, the people that you hang out with is ultimately the person that you become. I had some good friends. The thing was, there was no growth coming out of our hangouts or conversations. It was a lot of just gossip or surface level conversation. It wasn't anything that ended up over time getting deeper where I felt they were feeding me and my soul and my mind. And that can, over time, become this crutch of just like, we're just friends to be friends. I'm seeking out and noticing that I want quality out of these relationships. The third one is reposition. It's to revise or to shift direction. I took my loneliness and turned it into self-love and love for others because I was free of my past, past shame, past ideology of who I was. I no longer felt like I was holding on to remorse or this grudge against who I was as a person because now I understand that I've taken responsibility of the person who I was based on my reflection and refocusing my attention and saying, okay, now that I've understood that and know how to progress and move forward with it, that's where my repositioning and my new path is being paved forward in front of me. But I also have to do the work. You can't just provide that so easily. In this repositioning, I was growing spiritually and mentally stronger because of the freedom of those attachments that I used to have upon myself and upon these physical things in this world and of other people's opinions. And I think that's why I was holding on to a lot of these friendships that in that time was fulfilling and now it just no longer serves me and no longer serves them. I too not do my part in being a good friend, honestly. And I think he was showing me because of that wh where and what I can work on and be a better friend for the next people, for the next group that is coming through into my life. That's why we're meant to have a community of people around us so that way we can serve each other's passions and purposes for each other's sake and for his glory. And then relationship. Relationship with God and relationships to come. Relationship with yourself. I think that's important too. I think that's a major part of the isolation season that you're in. That you're learning about yourself and also learning what you want out of other relationships and the biggest one relationship with God and building off of that I think he was saying hey hi I'm just trying to get your attention and I finally got it we can't expect you know your one or two friends to be everything and anything for you that holds a lot of responsibility and we're also human I can't be everything and anything to everybody I just can't 
I can't fulfill all those roles that people want me to. And I'm sure that you've experienced that too with your friends. And some of them you had to set aside and say, hey, this is too much. You're too dependent on me or vice versa. Maybe you've been dependent on others. These are the moments that I think is healthy to you know take a step back and say what am i bringing to the table what are others bringing to the table and can i be a better friend and how can i seek out the qualities that i've been searching for in that good friend you're going to reflect on your past self and how you were but you're going to refocus that attention on what matters and then you're going to reposition that path with the true friends that are going to be your support system and back you up and be like-minded and lift you up. And those are the relationships that you're seeking and building. But you got to start with you and with him. And I know you're going to find that because I know I'm going to find that. And it'll come. It all happens organically. Been in the works where you are now. And I'm so excited for you.